I have to uh, check the location of the embassy. on YouTube. Uh, today we're going to study another Qi Bai Shi masterpiece called uh, uh, Southern Sails on the River. Uh, this, uh, this painting uh, is, print, is uh, printed on the cover the copy book or model book uh, by Qi Bai Shi. Um, this one. So um, I think among this uh, thumbnails, you can see this one really stands out. Uh, it's very non-traditional in terms of color. Um, I did some research into it um, as to the date of this painting, because here it says a year uh, about uh, 1924. Uh, actually, this one was, uh, uh, it's not dated here. Uh, on the painting, but uh, according to a new book that I, I just uh, ordered online, um, there is the editor's notes, you know, on, um, on this painting. It says, uh, the painting is not held in the Chinese National Art Museum, uh, but uh, it was first published in two, uh, 20, I mean, in uh, 20th century, early 20th century, 1922, in the, uh, the first exhibition that uh, uh, he, his uh, friend, uh, Chen Shizhen, uh, helped to, uh, to uh, Japan, you know, to open in Japan. So this, this is one of the uh, featured painting in the exhibition catalog or the news, news uh, media. So uh, they found that publication. And this is proof that this, this, this is before the 20, yeah, uh, 20, 1922. And, um, and with some further uh, digging, you know, they, 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 they now dated into uh, 1917, which is pretty early, 1917, uh, probably uh, uh, the first years after he moved a bit to Beijing, I think. So this this was a very um, colorful painting. You can see as you, uh, and it has a lot of uh, unique um, uh, breakups. <laughs> I mean, from tradition uh, that we we will explore. For example, the overlapping of a house with the trees. You don't really see this in other paintings, probably mm -hmm. like this uh, to have more depth. Uh, and so many selling boats uh, with colorful background mountains. So we're going to do the, the painting as a, a study. We, we won't be able to finish uh, all. So I, I will concentrate on the upper part of this. So this is what uh, uh, I did as a pre-class research. Uh, this is my second attempt. This one it was the first one. Uh, and uh, I used a different uh, um, uh, pr approach. In, in this one, actually, I did the wash first. It's like pouring ink, you can see. Probably I did on another piece of paper on top of that. And this one was the underneath. And then I, I added the ink. I could still add the, the ink. But uh, classically, I think he would do the ink first, then the color. So we're going to, uh, to show you the process. <coughs> uh, usually the Chinese landscape painting start with the ink. Uh, so we'll use the uh, ink to do the background mountain. Uh, for beginners, I strongly uh, suggest you do a, uh, a sketch with the charcoal. Mm -hmm. I, I can show you. And you can use soft char, soft willow charcoal. 
vine. So most important is the uh, horizon. So we have several horizontal um, horizon or, or, or uh, what do we call this? Water banks. So I would roughly, uh, okay, we, we could do it to as, a, uh, as low as here, but uh, you won't have room for the for the boats, so that's why we need to plan ahead. Uh, and you can do the boats first, but basically what I do at this point, I think uh, I see a diagonal, roughly like that, right? You can see a diagonal, diagonal and then the, uh, the clouds line or the uh, horizon and clouds, and then the skyline, something like that, it could be as high as that. And this mountain should to be the, the peak, but not in the center, I guess. So you need to mark the center where you don't want to put things. Um, so it should be a little bit to this side, okay? And then you can just draw some big, uh, big shapes. Okay. Here is a, is a very interesting, um, let me show you. Can I move this thing on the side? <coughs> I see this uh, uh, small buck is very um, important to balance the, the composition. So I need to carefully place this one. Probably not in the center, but a little bit to the right, right there. So this really kind of balance. So this will go out, I guess. And, uh, Now you can add some more folds. You know, you can you can see there are several there, so you can just make the break uh, the steps going like that, because this is a, a new composition. Um, to stretch a little bit more organically, so you can adjust that. Right, and you can use a paper towel to dust it off if something wrong. And even you don't make any mistake, you don't, you don't need to dark lines. Just dust, dust off like that. Um, Why you do this? Just you know, imagine uh, in your mind the the uh, the image to create the mental representation of the the painting. Um, so that's very important. Just change a little bit. See both my reference. Sorry about the shaking. Do the mountain first. Uh, I think the uh, landscape brush. Uh, you can use for the dots, the mass dust. You can use this one. Uh, you can use this for all, including the lines. I think uh, if you use uh, a thinner brush, it may be not uh, suitable for this rounded mass dust. So I'm going to use the mass dust brush. I have a brush rest. Okay. So 
So we need to start from a medium, medium dark. You can dilute that. Thank you. So we just do this uh, foreground first, maybe from the little darker. But the, the darks should be added after the light, I think. So we just do the contour first. Okay, the hemp stroke is uh, what I see here, and it goes too wet. He, he has, his style is pretty wet, so that's why I try not to paint too, too dry. So you can it, it divide, find the, uh, the, what do you call this, the chill or heel, heel character that we always talked about. This wrinkle goes in, uh, in parallel to the contour. So I like that, the dryness now. And you can start from light. You see this uh, create the 3D kind of um, effect. So you press a little bit towards the bottom. And, uh, Inner, inner wrinkles or, or uh, uh, texture. And then when the brush is dry, you can do a little bit of dry wash, kind of, uh, or just, you know, barely touch the papers, uh, scumbling a little bit with dry brush, that blending a little bit, harmonize it, just like that. <laughs> so, but, but you should, uh, should leave the stroke. And this takes uh, several layers. Uh, after this dry, we'll do the dots, right? So I, I'll do this rock a little bit away from the mainland. So be creative. Just use them as a prompt, you know. And you, you make your own uh, bonsai kind of design, okay? The landscape is like you you're building a miniature bonsai nest, you know. To so this one also has three dimensions. So the top is like that. Okay. The side maybe the something like that. Okay. So on the uh, near the river bank, you need to leave it. Uh, uh, natural, just uh, um, you don't have to draw a line. Um, you can you can see a little bit horizontal line that's added probably uh, later. Indicated the ripple near or the wave near the, the bank, but at this point, it should be uh, in and out, something like a jagged. Okay, as you can see here, uh, it's rough. Not, not even, you don't want to have an even line on that. And here it's a, like a little bay, so that's very important. And then I can just, um, here, here leave a lot of space for color, so we don't need to uh, fill in all the blanks. So I start with a little dark. <coughs> so first of all, the division of uh, uh, plants. Okay, because I I've changed the uh, the format a little bit, so I will kind of make the the mountain taller. So just uh, kind of goof it, you know, like a stretch it a little bit. Um, okay, here is the uh, the dark like here. I'm gonna just identify that's uh, about that. That that uh, mist line, which could be a little bit higher, I think, not in the middle, right? So like that, and you just draw this, and try to identify the chill, okay, the chill, the heel, 
different thing. Uh, but notice that there are some angular, like here is angular points, like here. So it's not, uh, looks like a round, but it's, it has squarish feel because it's a rock. You don't want to paint it too soft. Okay, so here is a little angle there, that, like that, and then like that. Here, the, the another uh, dimension may be here. This, this one goes, I'll just push it. Uh, so this steps, to, I'll make it three steps, right? So this is a, a one of the steps. And you can make another one because you don't want to uh, create like an equal <laughs> uh, space. So try to make uh, some uh, organic, make it more organic. Okay, here, dry brush. So I'm going to go faster, just to 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 blocking to blocking the. Okay, here like two uh, three parallels. You want to avoid that. So you may, you want to maybe change that a little bit. And try to do the the main the main uh, divide the main block first before you do other little parallels. It, it will be easier to fill in after you do this. Okay, the last layer. And this line is pretty subtle, I see. Like that. Mm -hmm. oh, it goes up. Mm. Okay. So, uh, it always step up when you, when you get move to distance. So one layer higher than the other. Uh, that's, that's, that looks, um, more, uh, it's what uh, the distance was created or the depth was creating. Okay, we can make this, this part will be red, so we can make this part gray. And I do vary the, the ink, maybe. Um, so this one goes down. And the, the, the good thing is I start with light, so you can always redefine that if needed. If you go dark first, then you have to be very sure what you're doing. Okay. And I had I can have like like a little soft edge there, so you don't have to break that. I have in this point break going out. So this point, this part I just uh, stay in like here. So you learn from uh, from uh, copy this kind of uh, uh, tactics in and out. Okay, here uh, we can leave space to create more depths. Uh, although this part looks like it connected, uh, you, we can we can move. Let me see. We can let it come in a little bit like that. Okay, so, okay. so this comes in, cutting in that. Okay, this should be a little bit dark. His his uh, strokes are so uh, firm, confident. So I I need to adjust to that mentality. So it should be, but uh, I think he he leave this uh, this this light spot uh, this light spot, uh, unpainted. That's very Chibaishi kind of board. Uh, so I need to leave that that those white. And it should be uh, saved for this uh, highlight, the top plane, maybe. Mm. 
continued dot could be uh, used to form a, a slope or to a line to also. So that's good. So before I commit to more details, I'm going to just, just uh, look at the whole picture still. So here is a camel uh, back kind of shape. So it's a valley going down and then going up like that. And, uh, so it usually it goes from the top down, right? It's the Pima, the, the hump stroke like that. You know, everybody has tendency to do the peak in right in the middle, including myself. So I try to adjust that. This this peak, this little peak, looks like the same, but uh, you need to make clear which is the host and the guest. You know, you can lower this if you can't if it confuse. The last layer is the blue. You don't need to outline. That's very important to to save because uh, um, no outline in distant in in remote mountain. Okay, you only see the soil weight or the, yeah. Cool. Looks like a pretty flat here. And there's dragon man. I'm, I'm <laughs> trying hard to find the dragon man. It's kind of, kind of uh, hollow. Instead of popping, <laughs> you just, but he has some some highlight there, so we don't have to really define, you know, if it's. But as long as you have the concept of dragon man, you know, just make the spine, uh, like that. It should the interlock, you know, left and right. Sometimes, kind of uh, hard to copy. You know, you just go with your own. Uh, if you if you go with the character I showed you, like uh, you know the the three three division three line division, the what we we call the 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 water it divides water, fen sui ni is it? Oh vein. Yeah, vein is a vein. It, oh, it, vein. It, yeah, it divides left and right mm -hmm. or, or front and back and that kind of. Here is the. You see that that little. Um, I just want to make sure this uh, Y-shaped division mm -hmm. that that um, in my uh, dictionary. <laughs> so it, everybody has their own vocabulary and their, you know land script. Uh, he has his. He learned it from the master seeds garden manual of painting. So that's why he's uh, considered as a literary painter, even you know he's not uh, formally trained as a literary as scholar, but he does have a hold of the a copy of the that book to start with. Okay, I'm going to make this line kind of uh, above the the clouds, right? So. I also can refer to my own. It's not working. Okay. So yeah, we, we can make a, another peak here just to make it more interesting. So this slope goes behind, maybe just like that. And uh, here I need to uh, do not close this heel, uh, this uh, what I call cloud line, so it, it will be like that. O leave it open, so kind of soft and not pressing like the water line. You go, like you press down, and even pulse a little bit. Here you don't need, just let it disappear in the clouds like that. Okay, and then finish the. The details now working a little bit uh, 
Okay, you shade above the contour to make it make it pop. Like here, I want to make this part pop, like this is red. So I, I, I make the, the, you know, the mountain behind it, maybe above it, <laughs> to make this simple. Usually it's above, above, yeah. And you, you squeeze out those uh, light part. This, uh, this uh, shaping or sh shading strokes. You can, you can go slow if the brush is dry. Some interlocked. Uh, I try to identify again that why, which one is in the front, and make sure I get that. Okay, so this one too. Okay, so here's why. Huh? That's why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when you are clear on that, you you just know which is in the front, which is in the back. Uh, okay, here the uh, I change a little bit so this be here. Okay. This will be here. Okay. I just make a, another <coughs> portion. Dark against light. So uh, this is generally is a dark block, but still within it it is dark and light. So make this light part uh, to stand out. You need to dark the farther or higher than behind it. Okay, so just like that. Maybe and try not to make it too. Curvy here. I think it, I see some squarish, squarish shapes. Okay, and here it will be cool. And then down there, um, and you need to consider the the, the dragon man that goes. Da, 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 da. Can you trace where that is here? Trace. Or like, can you show where the dragon vein? Do you see it? Um, the red lines. Um, One, two, three, four. Five. This, this is the. Okay, let me just do it here. I'll show you. So th this, this is uh, mm -hmm. the 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 spine, the ridge, mm -hmm. ridge. This is the the ridge. The ridge is omitted. It, it, you know, you can see those trees on the ridge. Mm -hmm. Here, let me just stop it. Usually the tree, uh, that mean the, the dots, the mustards is on the dragging, more activities on the dragging man. Okay, and you can use dots to, to, to make a line also, to, like, like here you can see. It's, it, if you dot along a slope line, mm -hmm. that create a, a movement. Mm -hmm. Okay, and try to do it without a split brush. I think this is a, more uh, scholar, scholars, scholar, scholarish. What do you call this? Uh, academic. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't like to do something like the contemporary. How they do with the split brush. Mm -hmm. So it's all everything is uh, done with the tip concealed stroke. Yeah. So you can you can see that. I see a little bit some uh, something like we call it. A, the uh, bending belt, mm. bending belt is like a like a uh, uh, Yuan Dynasty Zhan style. Yeah, maybe you can call that mm. that river. Oh. The the he he he's a hermit on the on the uh, lake, mm. Tai for thirty years. And he does the trees and river mm. banks. Do you mean like when you yeah, like turn the corner? Yeah, it's like, like a pole? bending. Yeah, okay, okay. here like a. You, you kind of like a folding, mm. folding stroke like mm. that. I see that some mm -hmm. stroke like that. 
um, and maybe here is the rails is on this side. And you can, s you can, um, his painting is, is a little bit amateurish, but that creates a kind of uh, uh, organic, organic, you know, not really patternized or kind of stylized. It's more, uh, he, he has traveled in, uh, in his early career uh, in extensively to, you know, to paint from life, mm. to kind of confirm the book uh, Master this is with the, from the real uh, landscape, you know. So this is long, long Pima or long paint stroke. And here's some short one. Um, and this, this empty space is really his, uh, his own style. So let's do the, I concentrate on the tracking man. Yeah, so that's the, the right. So here is the, uh, the hand stroke typically like that, parallel parallels. And I, I still see some kind of why, uh, it not entangled, you know, like, uh, uh, it's, it's very clear, he, he's so classic, you know, you, 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 you don't make uh, like an axis, you know. They're parallels, mm -hmm. yeah, parallel, but with some, uh, Kind of Y-shaped division. That's very like here. They indicated the the, the ridge or the dragon man. But he does it very subtly. And you can see the two uh, slope needs here. That's why I call it the dragon man. The the ridge. Yeah. Okay. And here the. It takes a long time to do this. I, I did the other one pretty fast. I, I, it's only like a one, one take with, without reloading. So let me try. Load a lot of. To be more certain here. And his. Uh, his his brush will become drier, so mm -hmm. he must start from like uh, the dark part, and then uh, uh, gradually kind of uh, dry it up, and just keep doing. You will get a dry, softer part. Okay, it, uh, those lines should be relatively the same. So this one is a mistake. <coughs> It's too wide. Okay. Try to correct that later. You don't want to mess up. Uh, uh, after it dries, you can. Uh, it's probably will disappear when when you wash with dark. You know? So don't don't really try to correct right away if something goes wrong. Try to do it after the first layer dry. You can always mm -hmm. redefine things easily. Okay, look at the rhythm of these dots. So this add rhythm to to the line. It, it can also serve the purpose to cor just to correct. Uh, I c he used some dots to separate the. Uh, Separate uh, planes. You know, if you put on top of the the, the contour, or you hide some some uh, joints, you know, the imperfect part. That's all the function of this this brush or this uh, dots. This kind of uh, mass dots. Okay. I did uh, leave out other dots. But you can see the difference with the, with that. The, the dots really makes it more luxuriant, luxuriant, luxuriant. What's that? Wow, <laughs> I forgot <laughs> how to pronounce that again. Luxuriant, luxuriant, luxuriant. Yeah. Okay, and uh, yeah. This, uh, I do see some 
some contour there. It's pretty dark. That's something arbitrary. I don't really understand why he does that. But uh, it might be a balance of this rock and on the bottom. It's the same dark, I see. So let's do that. Just cut. And then if you don't, you know, if you don't understand now, maybe later you will, if, you know, it's just kind of brings back the tension, I think. So here I squeeze out a little white peak in the front of this. And then, so this, this is Pima, typically. And he, he, he dot also along this line, make it really solid. So you don't need to, to wash, you just use dry brush. Um, you can fill in the, you can do it, uh, serve the purpose to harmonize it. Okay. And just, uh, sometimes uh, I, I, when I'm not sure I use the way light ink, then I can uh, kind of gliding on it with dark dry brush. So it kind of charge the value a little bit, you know, just to change the value. Without redo the stroke, you can just kind of darken the stroke with dry brush. See what I'm doing here? When the brush stroke are still damp, you can you can just uh, this will make the line a little bit fuzzy, you know, soft, uh, blurry. I think in watercolor it's called wet, wet into wet, a little bit wet, uh, dry into wet, dry into wet, yeah, mm. dry into wet. Okay, <coughs> yeah, this creates this fuzzy, uh, this soft kind of um, uh, blending effect. Okay, but you you do want things more um, kind of defined on the foreground, like. The strokes are very sure and clear. And you can okay, I see so at least you know, like two layers. So you need to kind of wait to first layer to dry and just add another. But this part is kind of behind this. So this one should be darker. And he used dots also to, to change the value. So either you, you use different shape or different uh, value stroke to do this next layer. Not repeat the same, same value, same stroke. Right? So he, you can use dots or darker lines or lighter lines than the, than the first one to uh, add Accumulate layer, accumulated layers. Okay. And you can leave a little space between those dots, so you can add another layer. Mm -hmm. If you if you put them uh, like too too much overlapping, it will become a cluster that's mm -hmm. the blob. So you, usually it, it's better like I keep them separated. I know I'm going to add more. Mm -hmm. If I do it next to each other, you know, co uh, combine them right now, it might blur into mm -hmm. a uh, unwanted effect. Yeah, so make it more clear. Don't lose all the white because uh, uh, you want to keep the paper white so the color will be vibrant um, on white. If you have all the grays, it will be 
different uh, we add colors okay and uh, now we can work on the on the boat and uh, there is some very simple water lines i think we can add those later maybe free to try <coughs> okay so yeah, we can do this right now. It with a dry light brush. We can just drag the brush, kind of define the, the water. Um, it should be leveled, but uh, I think in this part may be leveled more. Oops. Too light. Something like that. And then this kind of Somehow, yeah, it's more leveled, but he, he has some kind of a tendency to go up, maybe not, maybe not. Yeah. That's the ripple of uh, the, the water, that's all. <coughs> so it's all the, leave the blank. And the water is indicated further by the sailing boats. So you don't need to wash the river. In some print, it looks like a gray, a blue gray kind of, that's because the photography or the glass. Um, yeah, on this one, I think on the original, it should be, or sometimes the, the paper turns gray over time. Yeah. So let's just use the same brush. You can use smaller brush to, to do the boat. But if you use the tip of the larger brush, it's also fine. Okay, um, I think the 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 cell is pretty dark, maybe eight to nine or seven to eight, but it's pretty dry. Okay. And you can see some light. Well, the dark ones are pretty dark. Mm -hmm. Let's start from here. <laughs> I I don't I don't think I will draw the the boat, but the, the proportion is pretty much uh, mm -hmm. important. So you want to make the boat in proportion, not too small, not too big. You know, if it's too big like this, it will be <laughs> different, right? So it's uh, a little bit bigger, bigger than this rock, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. The, 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 the sequence is like, uh, um, do the left and then uh, in, a, in one, Vertical and then the the seven, you know, just eleven, ten, like a seven, one, and yeah. <laughs> the way I I'll do this uh, um, uh, just look at each group and do the front first, mm -hmm. like a stacking uh, a stack of uh, cards. So let's do the front one. Don't even think too much, right? So the first one is here, and then the seven, that's too much. And you can use some control agent, like, you know, glue or whatever, to control the smearing, or just dry the brush. Mm -hmm. Dry the bottom of the brush with the paper towel would help to control the bleed. And you can do this bottom, uh, how, right? H U L L, the body of the bo boat. H U L. Hull. 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 H U L. Yeah. H U L. Hull. Because the hull is the same darkness. Maybe the the cabin is lighter on this one. I see. Mm. Okay. So let's just say that you have to be very careful with this one. And this is a little bit uh, uh, too low. So I make the mask a little higher. It's not in the middle, it's not in the front. Okay, let's stop it. And the carbon is behind. So if, if you want, if you can just indicate a little bit. And then we'll use light ink to do a little wash. If it, this is a big painting, you will see a little like axis for the, the texture, you know, mm. the, the, the bamboo cover or something like that. But that's the first one, right? The second one is easy. Just do the seven. Okay, the 
close up a little bit and using the hull as well and uh, the salmon goes really like that and the musk the musk so this is a is from the front row and you can see the this one you can uh, you can have and notice the the line he 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 uh, this is a kind of a perspective right mm -hmm. the linear perspective but I also count the distance so this 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 three should be a little closer mine is too even I know his, his is better so those this is what we call the rhythm mm. the distance it doesn't matter you know uh not much like each line belongs to what but he he obviously more concerned with the distance of this but even though at the expense of you know this may, may not match that that cell it doesn't matter mm -hmm. really you know it's the wholeness the the gestalt gesh, gestalt counts yeah the mental image in, in people's minds so you just give them enough enough information okay i i started from the behind which is wrong okay you should start from what's in the front okay so this one it's much easier you start from the front so here is another uh, the second row uh, what do you call this and just but this this one must go up like a, you know this step going up it cannot be lower because this is behind so the principle is what's behind is higher right okay and then uh, you can do this so three three each group yeah, it, then add the mask is that so it looks complicated but the rule is pretty simple you do the front first yeah okay now you add a separate one to add this group um, this one is way on top so roughly here maybe i'll just do the how first i'm not sure if that's a good idea but i also keep the the a diagonal so it goes in maybe not behind and then just do a triangular shape and like that oops i think i made a cross in there that's okay yeah just control your don't paint, you know paint through the like me okay just to So not everyone has the carving. Sometimes you just indicate one or two is enough. So that's one group. After you got familiar, you could you can do this. this uh, the same principle, you know. You said you can do a thousand just like that. So this one, I'm just consider the uh, the relationship with the rock or something. Mm -hmm with this group let's move it to so they are con uh, kind of loose ones so let's do the dance part first maybe good idea and then to start which one is the front like this group here don't worry about something in between i will just concentrate uh, but this uh, on my composition is a little bit behind this rock so that's a, another rule to consider. If the boat's going to nowhere, going to this dead end, <laughs> it will be kind of funny. So you have to really uh, justify it with the natural rules. So you, you cannot go into that. It, unless it's a harbor, you, you want to make some, some um, harbor you know, structure or like a... Uh, otherwise, they should be away from the bank all right so it's a, it's a so when you change one thing you need to really adjust to that let's just make a that in, in the front of this rock okay let's just do okay, here, let's, 
I'll just copy his his idea. His composition. It's easier to just copy the relationship he already had with each other. So let's just do that. So the relationship between those it's already defined. Okay. Like that. So those those even smallest uh, stroke it has the, the beginning and ending very sure marks, you know. We just use those principles, you know, you can go a little bit up. And so after a while, you you just apply this automatically without, it's much more uh, convenient, just, you know where to look, you know, to, to find your reference. <coughs> Just do um, this one. So I start from ev everywhere and look at the whole um, whole um, layout or placement. So this would give me idea of where the the other boats. Let's do. I already have this this way. I mean this line. You can. Um, yeah, but I think probably just don't let it penetrate through the sail. You could have you know, omit those. I think if you want to put sail above this line. Mm -hmm. Now it's it's. A, I don't see any possibilities of doing this. So you have to kind of avoid. Avoid crossing that line. So I can kind of barely break that line. Somehow I try to break that line to fix things. Maybe just like that, you know, so you're not really breaking that. Okay. And make a oh, sorry. This one must be. <laughs> No, no place for the sale. So just let it go. Okay, here you can see the violation, right? If you do this like that, this violates the front and back row. <coughs> but who cares, right? <laughs> People do know that. <coughs> but when you have a cluster, you know, you confuse, try to confuse them just to kind of yeah, just try to make some something justified. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. And in the front row, you you see more of this uh, cabin. Yeah, you have, everything has to be very certain. If, uh, if you're not sure, leave it out. Yeah, that's uh, okay. Here, uh, we should have some large ones okay. in between. So I see this group right here. I, I have used this group many times <laughs> here and there, I, but it doesn't matter. It just each time, you know, it's different. Okay. So this is this one. Okay, now. Sometimes I do the back first. Okay. 
Look at the whole shape. Certainly, those front in the front must be uh, this one must be right. right? <coughs> so um, you see the the both the, uh, in the distance a little lighter so, and the drier. So the this this why good. Uh, Break the the edge, so we just do that, and come in. It suggests more, more uh, outside. Okay, uh, here is a small one. Let me see. This one stops the eye from going out, and uh, here is a small one. Tend to bleed uh, <coughs> when the br when the brush is dry. Mm -hmm. Tend to bleed more. Okay. So you can use smaller brush. Uh, yeah, I, actually there are small boats, so the boat itself could be some big, some small, but uh, like a more rhythm, uh, just to vary the size. Some boats. So this is a, like a roll, so it's too dark. Okay, now we have a. Try to do a separate one. I don't see not many isolated mm -hmm. shapes at all. That's a very good design. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you always combine shapes. That you know, it's more um, yeah, preferable mm -hmm. like that. Just combine them, combine shapes. That's the mm -hmm. idea. Okay. Then I used light ink just to kind of uh, shade the carbon a little bit. You look at you know as a whole. You don't need to do every one of them, just mm -hmm. to indicate, to suggest. All right. Um, let's see. So we need to add some more ink before we do the wash. Okay. <coughs> and I see uh, some darks to separate the the front. Uh, the front of the mountain. This is probably more. From the back. So I need to use more dots. So the dots, not right in, in the middle of the line, a little bit above. Mm -hmm. But it's rooted on the line also. And here you can see I need more. Line. I instead of drawing that line, I can dot more, just to define that. I use dots to to uh, complete those lines. See that uh, harmonize, integrate those lines. A little lighter for this inner dots. And he used dots to indicate a slope going this way. Oops, that's a little dark. And just hide those, um, those bad strokes, I will call it, um, with the uh, dots. Yeah. So that you don't really see anymore. So don't, uh, if you paint a real, like a blurred, blurred stroke or something, you can always hide those uh, imperfect parts with dots. 
very effective. Uh, DOTS has a rhythm, you know, some, some uh, if five or three uh, group, and you see the distance here, and uh, oops, this should be lighter, right? But it does, <laughs> it does, a little bit lighter. So we should be a little bit more uh, careful with that. But not, not too light. It should be darker than the line, than the uh, wrinkles or the shaping stroke, the linear. Add a little definition. Not uh, what I said. The dots should not be over. Uh, just like you know the way if you put lots of dots on this part, it will change the the, the weight on the on the. Uh, so the, it should be always more on top of the mountain because where you get more sunshine, maybe you know the tree are taller. Or on the bottom sometimes, um, but not in the middle, too, not too much. That's my observation. Maybe not wrong. But, uh, in painting, you need to concentrate on the ridge. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, this, yeah, go ahead. Does he have too many in the middle? Um, yeah, you don't have to copy exactly, but those lines are almost, I think, they are a lot uh, lighter. So it's mm -hmm. so subtle. Uh, let's just do that. Uh, he, he does like that to indicate forest. So maybe it, uh, he saw forest, like yeah. it's not, not uh, exposed he, uh, earth. Or, so you, you just paint it almost like those uh, horizontal dots uh, in, in, on the raining landscape, you know, those knee dots. He doesn't do that horizontally, but uh, he keeps the paper dots kind of shape. But that's, that's probably served the same purpose. You know. See, if the dots is too dark, it's kind of, um, uh, it depends. Because the line I have is lighter, so the dots could be light, darker. He, he got pretty heavy lines. So dots is lighter. What I said is you can use different elements, either light or darker, mm -hmm. to combine. Mm -hmm. So if the line is dark, you add a darker line, that destroys the uh, depth. Mm -hmm. the sense. So, you, so if the line is already too dark, you can go lighter. Mm -hmm. But if I do light, you won't see it. So I, I'll still do darker. That's more uh, conventional. Mm -hmm. I won't say classical, but uh, maybe just the, the rule of thumb is um, use different different tonality to for dots and the line, mm. so they will work complement each other. And you know, I, I use darker ones instead of lighter ones, but here is darker. You can always, and those dark darker dark is dotted after the wash, the color. Yeah, mm. so and. I try to lead the eye, you know, with the the uh, this vein, dragon vein. So it should help, but not uh, confuse the the vein. That's the principle. So I put more dots on the around the ridge, maybe. And here you get. I don't really. Um, it should, shouldn't see too much there, but, but he does, he does use dots. Uh, he's, this is a master study, so we try to, to copy everything. <laughs> okay, this one, uh, you can see dots along the slope. Uh, I do have a little, peak there just to create more rhythm, I think. Okay, now the, the, the line could be a little bit stronger, but not to, to, to uh, scratch. 
not 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 to uh, like uh, shade shade shading. It's still linear, you know, parallel lines. about it I'm going to wait it dry and then um, do the wash do you want to let me see oh, we only have 45 minutes mm -hmm. well, let's just continue then okay. do you have like a hair dryer or a hair dryer yeah I think it should be fine mm -hmm. if we um, just uh, you know avoid th those mm -hmm. dots. Just pass like the clear is all dry, and we don't need to do this. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm gonna start with from here. And if you do the wash, uh, just like uh, how you do the the ink, it doesn't really. Uh, and sometimes, as you can see here, I did. Uh, Wet, wet into wet, so they blend into each other mm -hmm. more organically. So this line, there are some bleeding you can see. It's, it's not mm -hmm. done uh, after it dries. If the color is not too wet, like raining itself, it should be fine. So <laughs> I'm going to use uh, this plate <laughs> to make a Wrong color. You can you you can mix yellow with uh, red to get that. I think it's uh, more convenient. Uh, I mean, controllable. If you use uh, amber, it's kind of uh, muddy already. <laughs> you cannot get the sharpness. But I do want to mute it a little bit so it's uh, not so. Um, maybe we use a different brush. Just blend it on the paper. Uh, we have some different color than his. So I use a little, uh, what do you call this, uh, oak ochre color, which is not in the tradition of palette, you know. So let me just do a little test. Uh, okay. So you can, you can do something like uh, combine colors right away. Let me do this color. If you want to really vibrant, you just go directly. And I didn't really blend it. You can see the yellow on the bottom of the brush, like that. So it just kind of, just like that. It leaves the stroke in the same motion as the, uh, the washes. Okay, I mean the, the, the ink lines. The washes are the same. He probably did a little ink wash, but I doubt it. He, I think he probably just dried. Uh, yeah, you can you can use some gray for this subtle part. I think to mute a little bit, and then you don't have you don't want to paint the whole thing the same vibrancy. I think so. This shady part. It's pretty subtle. Okay, I just dry wash, kind of gradually. Okay, here is some yellow. Let me just highlight the yellows. Just do it so arbitrarily, but I think it's a sunset color mm -hmm. theme. So it uh, it doesn't do the sky, but let you uh, feel the mm. the, the uh, time of day with this kind of warm color. Okay, this 
dry into wet. Just like that. You don't want to um, go slow because it, it might bleed. Mm -hmm. the, the, the brush just flying on that to change the hue a little bit like that. Dry on, dry on wet. Uh, dry on wet. Yeah. Okay. Dry on wet. Very clear contrast between the, the white and the, this layer here. And he had this layer also very similar to that. Here it's dry. And this is pretty wild, very, very wet, uh, red. It's really like that. That's it. So you just do like almost like a pure. Uh, Blood red, <laughs> bloody red, yeah. And some white, little wh pockets of white. Uh, later I'll, I'll blend with a little yellow, but I, I leave it to, for the stroke. It, 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 it has the breath, so it's not a dead flat. Wash, yeah. Okay. Dry brush. And some green here, you can just do the yellow first and then add, <coughs> add, add green to that. Okay, here is, uh, because we don't have much room for another, but I do want to have like a large, small, three blocks of uh, this red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a good number to, to remember. Mm -hmm. Large, small, and medium. Uh, so this is a large, mm -hmm. medium, almost same color, just pure red. Uh, pure red. And here is pure red. And another red area is right here. That's small. Okay, <laughs> we just want to symbolize that. Okay, and you can add a little bit diverse. Okay, the very diverse uh, to that. But this is another spot. So here is so that that anchor the the color dominant. That, that's uh, that's done with the red. So I'm going to work with only the the subtle white, uh, subtle greens, and the, mm -hmm. the blues will become. And you can prepare the 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 coat with all the warm underneath it, because you want to have a base for blue and the greens with with amber. Kind of muted. Under here. What does that do? It it just uh, uh, serve complement the blue. Otherwise, the blue is like a uh, chalky or pastelish. Oh. Uh, if you use it on the white, so you always either put on 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 the uh, ink or on the amber uh, mm. and something like that. So it's a uh, um, it's a classical uh, color combination to, mm -hmm. I think you, you see this in natural stones, like uh, those uh, mm -hmm. azurite or something, they, they, they have brown and they use it mm -hmm. kind of, um, so the green usually goes above the bronze. So, okay. Okay. But you don't need to do that for red or yellows? Um, I don't see here because you want oh, to okay. just really no, because it's translucent, transparent color. It depends. I think if, if it's uh, okay. opaque color, opaque green and blues, they probably use indigo. Not not really, not really uh, covering colors. Mm. 
but it's, it's a um, safe, you know, plate if you if you wash with with the warm color first, then do the. But you don't. You, you do have to leave it uh, to to wait to dry sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think otherwise it may create a muddy mess. So it will show through a little warm under under that. So I'm going to use uh, uh, this blue color to, to save that yellow, yellow to save any brush. For the blue, I'm going to use uh, I think it's, uh, this. I'm not sure what this is. Probably it's pretty much like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so shall we say tremarine? Um. It's a Japanese color. I'm okay. not sure what it is. This could be hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit greenish. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, we can, yeah, I can make a little bit opaque with this. Uh, this is uh, another lavender kind of color. It's very subtle. I almost like uh, lavender. Yeah. So this, it could be like that. So I can, oh, I have indigo here. So you can make it darker like that. Yeah. So that's the color. Oh, I think I, I made a mistake. I covered the, 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 the red. Yeah, that's okay. I was thinking that I want to contrast this layer just to make this puff mm -hmm. a little bit. So this this is the the yin or the shady part on the right side. Uh, the, just separate the yeah, just kind of see I almost use the same stroke. Okay, this part I think I didn't prepare for the it could be just gray. Some some Lots of gray usually help to bring out the color. Um, yeah, it's uh, okay. I just add a little green, blue, some kind of opaque to cover the. To blending to the warm, so it's kind of softer transition, and it's it's optical mix of coat and yellow, just like impressionist does. So people, when people see in Tokyo this painting, the comment on newspaper says it's like a Cezanne. You know, he also did a sunset with the sun, uh, sun sunset mm -hmm. or sunrise. It's like it says compared to to um, to Monet, yeah. Mm -hmm. It says um, yeah. So he this thing is uh, um, the the traditional literary painter painting in Chibash's style is the a response to the Western mm -hmm. uh, impressionism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at that time, so they are really practiced, and they bought all of the paintings from the show. So uh, Chibashin, his landscape was not first uh, accepted by the colleagues in his uh, uh, in in Beijing, you know, in the National Academy. But after this show, successful show in Japan, people start to recognize the value and start to collect his paintings. Into. So in general, this dots should be uh, greens, right? So I can put just put uh, some some blue on on top of that. It's, it's good. Or you can just 
dot uh, around mm -hmm. some color dots around them just to dot them just to give them a feel of green okay and here you can have uh, just some ink to mute uh, it's a kind of lavender -ish. so you can add a little bit red just to make it a little purple -ish here he does everything almost like a uh, painting flowers and birds you know he just do it in one shot a la plama you know then the oil painting they say the, the first attempt or the first one one shot you know. in, in uh, italian i think a la plama just one shot so here is the warm the cool against the light yeah. the cool behind or bit yeah just kind of just lines not not really washes okay just add a little dirty color to make it gray for this uh, this part and you can um Use the spray, maybe just to soften the edge. I think he he did, he, he not really care about. It. Just let it bleed, maybe, and maybe you touch a little water to soften the brush, and just go like that. Mm. So the brush tip is uh, soft, like that. Oops! I used the bottom. The bottom is hard, and I use the tip to soften it. And this don't have to be even, okay? This is a, a, a cloud line. So the last layer is the this this mountain shape. Let's do that. It's pretty dark. That's typical in sunset, I guess. Mm. So we can do it in two steps. We can go uh, with uh, one. Um, let's see. Let's go close. Mm. You can you can gradate it so the brush has the dark and the light and just add a little more saturated okay so this is pretty dark okay let's do the top first from here it's on the left side right? if it goes up almost a, like a triangle and just define uh, cutting the shape of the the slope it's a little bit too steep in mine. Okay, and then go horizontally and just kind of push, push gradually. When the brush is dry, just lift it like that. You're almost done in one stroke. And just go back to showing a little bit more. I use the same brush, you can repeat. And you can use uh, clean water to soften this part. The blue and the green uh, mix on the paper become green here. But if you want, you can just add greens, pre-mixed uh, greens if you want. Okay, or we just go with a little bit blue, uh, mineral blue, to really green, apple green. Okay, here. We 
this is pretty. So is it? No, let's go to the movie. Let's. I'm thinking the the whole color balance. So there was a, a red there. I'm not sure if I want that, but that's okay. So what about this part? This should be cool. Yes. And just make a little adjustment finally. Uh, you need to make sure one side maybe is or the 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 deep the shady part. A little bit more to to contrast. Then this part is uh, I want it right. So let me just close up. Oh, you can have more dots. Oops, my dots uh, is too rough. You want to keep. The manner of a scholar, so they don't really like this kind of wild uh, strokes. And that even Chibashi don't, don't do this. So if it's authentic, I mean the orthodox school painters, they always do everything very neatly, very very organized. And this part is pretty dark. Dark. Dark, dark. This uh, gives a feel like a child, childish kind of painting, you know. It's, it's very... Um, naive kind of. This painting is described like the steam bath shape. <laughs> That's the typical his. his steam bath, uh, you said? Yeah, steam, oh. steam bath shape, like it's a funny. mantle, mantle, right? The mantle side, yeah. I think this probably a little bit. This is a little bit too steep. So, so his has a little, but my. Uh, not sure. Should I do that change or it might change the? I think it looks. Good. Yeah, it looks good. I think um, you have to stay with your own chi or you know the the organism of uh, your own. Mm -hmm. So it it just. Yeah, I think this shape matches with this. Just that it's deeper. Like this is the same. Yeah, shape. same chi. Okay. Okay, so that's I try to redefine a little bit, just to awaken a little bit mm -hmm. this uh, structure lines. But it's too wet, I think maybe we just leave it out. <coughs> um, Eliminate. I wanted white. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you cannot do it when when it's still wet. But uh, after it dries, you can use uh, some uh, neutral color or uh, similar color, maybe just to soften the, the unwanted part. Not every like here, maybe a little bit. Softer. Okay, let's, let's take a look from the picture here. Pretty good. 
<laughs> you want to uh, leave it to like this original or you want to uh, color it? I tried to color the, the boats as well. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, you can, mm. yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah. I think it works in this one, but this one I think you could leave. Could leave it up, yeah. yeah. Uh, we can also try, you know, on this one, you, even though it's mounted, you can still make uh, changes or you know make some color um but i do like the <coughs> the, the whiteness mm -hmm. in it it just um become landscape landscript you know not landscape mm -hmm. painting so it's like script like oh here's the boat and it's just right boat the boat <laughs> you know so that's the leave it okay I don't know we'll just sign it okay um, he signed on this corner you know on this original we don't have this foreground so I'm going to do um, on that so here's water let me see what we did on this one I have this uh, kind of stop Stop this uh, this line going out. That's mm. that's good. And you can use palm. I use I'm using my palm to iron it. That's how I, I should make sure I bring the hair dryer. Okay. Um, this one I also did uh, on the uh, <coughs> on the top. Mm. Yeah, I tried. Oh, <coughs> Maybe while we wait, I can try to fix this one. Mm -hmm. I, I kept thinking after I, I finished, you know, it's not finished. I don't even stamp it. So, so I think it's pretty much finished, but not uh, completely. If I should add a little bit lines. Um, but uh, I didn't really do the classical way. It's almost like a mm -hmm. monoprint. I think it was, yeah, so I try not to draw too much with the brush, so just... How did you get that texture? Oh, it was like blotting, or maybe I painted on top of a, uh, a, a, a paper, on, on, on another piece of paper oh, on top. Okay. Yeah, that's the reason I, I got this. And I, I just painted like with wrinkle, you can squeeze the... Uh, dry brush, basically, mm -hmm. yeah, very dry brush. But you know, just a little bit dry brush, maybe define the. It just bring up the connection between the two. Mm -hmm. A little bit define, a little bit. I'm not sure if I should uh, do any warm. Maybe a little bit to to echo the the, the yellow mountain in the distance. So that's. Just a little bit accenting, accent, accents. This you know, takes dry brush. <coughs> now I just add a little bit highlight to echo this line. This this red. I know this this two will become more. So it's, it's all a little bit more harmonized with a warm color in this, in this shady rock. I think that helps, right? So this is another version of this. Which one you like better? Which one I like better? Um, Without uh, I... the, the color on the background. It's kind of too yellow. It makes... Because usually the dark, I mean the mountain in the in the back should be more uh, purplish or greenish like that, and uh, I think you, we we can still do some change like uh, using opaque lavender to to, to add to the yellow. Maybe that will. 
Hell for a little bit. So I think they're all make it different. <laughs> yeah, you see, yeah. I use I use warm on the on the core. Now I use the uh, core on the on the warm just to bring to. It's like uh, so uh, the two um, friends are different when they try to get together. You know they have to change. Both sides have to change. Mm. The cool become a little warmer, warm become a little cooler. So they, they got marriage mm -hmm. <laughs> to work. Otherwise, it would be too. You see how how this uh, analogy works. Mm -hmm. So it just make them um, to kind of towards each other, move towards each other. Mm -hmm. okay. That's. I think that's okay. You don't have to change uh, your the, the whole thing, you know, just to have a little bit um, yeah. into. Yeah, I like this one. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, the same kind of things you work in daily life works with painting. It's like a cooking, like anything, you know, you just have to. Uh, Harmonize things and, mm -hmm. and to try to make you know if it's too salty, you add a little sugar. If it's too too so, too yeah, sweet, you add some more. Yeah, just balance, balance, right? Okay, so this part, I think, and so this is another kind of yellowish. All right, let's stop and uh, sign. Okay, well, I have this. <clears throat> this title was given by the editor um, or the museum. In the original Japanese, uh, it's a different words, something like a. It's a very, uh, some rare words you don't even find in, ch in, in normal dictionary, I think. So they change it into a more descriptive name, e easier to understand. Jiangshang, Qianshang. And I use the very uh, old character. This is not common for, I will write the common characters. So this is, this is easy to, to recognize. The river, uh, on the river. Okay. I just write all the characters. And uh, this accident, uh, we just said is a, is a happy one. So I'm not going to worry about that. And uh, it will light, uh, it will be lighter, much lighter after it dries. But it ha may have got from one of these brushes that I did the last touches, I think. Okay, um, thanks for watching and uh, happy painting. See you next time.